We've been playing Tetris for 35 years now. What do I have the success of this game? I'm going to find out today by making my own version using the Unity Game Engine. We'll do this in 5 steps. 1. Creating the shape. 2. Making it move left, right and down. 3. Cutting the rotation. 4. Making the tetramino collides. And finally 5. Clearing the line. Ok, so here we are inside an empty Unity project that I have set to 2D. This is where I will be creating the game. For making the shape, what I'm going to do is right click in the project windows, go under sprites and click on square. This will create a new square sprite that I can drag inside the Yaki windows to make it appear at the center of the game. The first shape I'm going to make is the T Tetromino. I will duplicate each square by hitting the Ctrl D and I will move them while maintaining the Ctrl keys to snap them to the grid so that everything will be aligned correctly. Now I will create an empty game object, reset its position and change its name to T Tetromino. Then I can draw all of the square as children of this game object and while we are at it, I will change their color and set their scale to 0.9 to make them more distinct. And just like that we have created our first shape, congratulations! Ok, let's make our Tetromino move now. I will select the Tetromino parent, click on add component and create a new script that I will call Tetris block. Now inside the script, we will check if the player is pressing the left or right arrow on the keyboard and if it does, we will make our Tetromino shift to the left or right by adding a new vector 3 to the current position of the Tetromino. And here we go, the horizontal movement is working. Each time I press a key, it slides to the left or right. Ok, next step is the vertical movement. For that, I will need in my script two global variables that I will name previous time and full time and that I will set to 0.8 initially. Full time is the time before the tetromino move down, so each time that the difference between the current time and the previous time is bigger than full time, we make our tetromino fall. Oh and don't forget to set the previous time to time the time once the tetromino has fallen or this will happen. And there we have it, our tetromino falls correctly, but in the original game we can make the tetromino fall faster by pressing the down key. To make that effect, we simply have to change the value of fall time when we press the down arrow key. And we can easily do this by replacing fall time by all of this. This shortcut is like asking a question. If we are pressing the down key, we return fall time value divided by 10. Otherwise, we return directly fall time. And here we have it, we now have our falling tetromino. But we have something missing here. For now, the tetromino can move anywhere but what we want to do is to restrict its movement to a grid. So I'm going to drag another square to my scene and scale it to 10 on the X axis and to 20 on the Y axis. This will be the background that will show the zone where the tetromino can move but as you can see, the square appears in front of the tetromino so to fix this, I'm going to reduce its order in layer in the sprite renderer and also I will change its color to a light yellow. Now is the tricky part so keep following me please. As you can see, the center square is at zero position. This means that every square at its left or below will have a negative number in its position. Don't you think like me that it will be so much easier if every block position in the game was made of positive integer? To do this, we can simply move the background sprite that we've just created while holding Ctrl key until the left bottom position is at the 0, 0, 0 coordinate. And now everything within the background will have positive value. So now that we have shifted the background, we can shift the tetromino as well and make sure that the position of its parent is an integer. Oh, and I can also drag the camera and put it at the center of the game. In the camera component, we can also zoom out by increasing the size value. I think a value of around 11 will be perfect and I will also change the background color of the camera to something, uh, let's say, grey. Ok, so now the visual of our grid is ready. We only have to make it happen in the code. To do this, we will create two more integer variables. One for the width and one for the height. Why did I set the variable to static, you ask? It's because we want the value of the variable to be shared among other Tetris blocks and as the height and the width of the grid will be the same for each Tetraminos, it's exactly what we want. 
Now I will create a new function that I will name valid move, which return true or false. It will check for every square of the tetromino if the position of the square is inside the grid. If it doesn't, it return false, and if it does, it return true. Here we make sure that the position we check is rounded to an integer, so it will always fall inside a correct grid value. And now every time that I move the tetromino, we can check if it's a valid move, and if it's not, we simply reverse the movement that we have made. And here we have it, if I press play, you can see that I cannot move to the left or right of the grid and at this bottom the block is stopped. And that concludes the step 2, let's move on to step 3, the rotation of the block. Rotation in Tetris is really really tricky, so I have used this image as a reference to help me. In this image we can see that the tetramino always rotate around a specific point and this is what we will be doing. I'm going to create a new vector3 variable that I will name rotation point which will be as the name suggests the rotation point but in relation to the tetramino's position. And if the player press the up key we will rotate the game object by 90 degrees by calling a function called rotate around which does exactly the job. Except that rotate around only works with world coordinate, but the rotation point that we will be setting is in local position. To fix this, we simply have to use the transform.transform direction on the rotate point variable before using it in the rotate around function and transform dot transform direction will change a local position to a global position. And here we go, we can see for the T tetrominos, the rotation point is at the same position of the tetromino position, so I will let its value to 0, 0, 0. And we can see that our tetromino correctly rotates now that we have pressed the play button. Okay, now it's a good time to create the other tetrominos. I'm going to duplicate the T tetrominos and move the square to form the O tetromino. Finally, I will select them all and set the color to yellow. And final part, we can see from the image that the rotation point is at the center of the O tetromino. So at 0 0.5 unit to the right of the parent and 0 0.5 unit to the top of the parent. So I will set the rotation value to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0. And now we will do the same for all the other tetraminos. As it will take some time, I'm going to speed up the video right now. And here we go, we now have all 7 tetraminos. As we want to spawn random tetromino in our game, we have to save them somewhere in the project files. To do this, we simply have to drag them inside the project folder and you can see they start to appear in the project window as prefab. Now that we have them saved in the project, we can remove them from our scene. We can create a new empty game object that will make them spawn. I will make sure to reset its position and change its name to spawner. I will now move its position at the top of my grid and make sure that the position is an integer because we will be spawning tetraminos at the same place. Now I will create the script that will do the spawn job and I will name it spawn tetromino. In this script we will need an array that will contain all the prefab we have made and a function which will instantiate a random prefab at the position of this spawner. Oh, and uh, finally, we want to spawn a new prefab at the start of the game also. Now, I can drag all of the Tetris block we have made in the Tetrominos variable of this script and press play. We can see that a random Tetromino spawn at the start of the game and what's left to do is head back to the Tetris block script and when we cannot move vertically, we will first disable the script, then we will access our spawner script with find object of type and call again the spawn new tetromino function. And now tetrominos are falling from the sky, awesome right? But I guess you figured out by now that the tetrominos won't collide together and that's what we will be doing next in the step 4. To make the block collide we have to somehow keep track of all previous tetrominos that have fallen. To do this we'll create a 2D array of transform which will store the block according to their position on the grid. For example, if this block is at the position 3, 4, we can access it by calling grid 3, 4. Oh, and make it as static. 
As mentioned earlier, static makes the value of the grid to be the same among all the tetramino. Now, we can simply populate the grid when our tetramino will reach the ground with a new function that I will name add to grid. In this function, we simply loop all children and add their transform to the corresponding index on the grid using int. Finally, when the tetramino touch the ground, we can call add to grid to update the grid array. And now to make the grid collide between each other, we can update the valid move function that we've made earlier by checking if the position of the child is already taken by another square and if it's the case, we return false. Okay, so I hope you are following me so far. We have random tetrominoes that are falling from the top. We can control the tetrominoes. We can make them rotate, move to the left or right. And also the blocks are colliding each other. But there is one last key feature missing, the line clear. In this project, we'll do the naive line clear, which simply remove the line and move down our above row. However, this method seems natural. There is some case where it seems strange like this one. So some Tetris game have other type of line clear, such as sticky or cascade, which basically changes from the way the falling blocks act. So if you are motivated, go on and implement those other line clear and comment on this video to show me how you solve this problem. Okay, so back to our project, I'm going to head back to the Tetris block and I'm going to create a new function called check lines. We will check every position of the grid from top to bottom and we are going to do it like this. First, we are going to check if we have a line and if it does, we will delete all the element in it and we will move down all the line from above. To check if we have a line, we can simply loop among all the line element of the grid and check if nothing is null. To delete it, we simply delete all element of the line and we can assign the grid to null value afterwards. To move down the blocks, we'll start by the line that we have deleted and we will assign the element from bottom to be this one, then we reduce its eye by 1 and set the previous element in the grid to 0. And here we go, our Tetris game is now completed. Go on and make your own version too. Tell me what next game you want me to do in the comment section below. But most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. It really really helped me to grow my channel as a small YouTuber. So thank you and see you around.